السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد So tonight's lecture is entitled Ramadan and the Quran Ramadan and the Quran And the Quran it is the speech of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and if that was the only virtue for the Qur'an, the speech of Allah, that it is the speech of Allah, لَكَانَ ذَلِكَ كَافِيًا That would be sufficient. So if there's no other virtue for the Qur'an except Allah spoke it, this is sufficient. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَفَضْلُ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ عَلَى سَائِرِ الْكَلَامِ كَفَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَى خَلْقِهِ The virtue of the kalam of Allah over all other types of kalam it is like the virtue of Allah above his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his arsh is above the seventh heaven. And Allah is above his arsh subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a way, taliqu or yaliqu bi jalalihi. In a way that befits his majesty. This is from our aqidah and our creed. So just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as high as he is, as exalted as he is, cannot be compared with any one of us. Then the kalam of he subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be compared with the kalam of the I'm not from I'm not Shakespeare but he and the yani, of us of human beings one of these children how old are you? six and a half six and a half what's your name? Ala Ad-Din Ala Ad-Din do you have a car? no what about a train? Huh? do you have a train? No. train no train but if Ala Ad-Din, and where's your dad? He's here? Um, Who's with you? My mom. Your mom, okay. If Ala Ad-Din came and he said, I have a car. He doesn't because I just asked him. But if he did, would any one of us understand that this car is a car for riding? It's a toy car. He didn't say, I have a toy car though. He said, I have a car. Where did you get it from that he has a toy car? How did you understand that? He didn't express that, did he? What you have done is you have taken the statement and you have placed it at the value of the speaker. So it's impossible that Ala ad drives a car. Impossible. Illegal, impossible, it's not right. If one of us adults say we have a car, then we understand it is a car for riding. If a person of mal and a person of jah, a person who has money, wealth, says I have a car, then their car is not like our car. Another example, if a person of authority, a ruler, a king, a prime minister, a president, he sends greetings to another person like him, another president, another ruler, another king, he sends greetings only. He says, for example, if he's a Muslim ruler to another Muslim ruler, Assalamu alaikum. This Assalamu alaikum, this greeting is going to be shared and posted all over social media. King so and so, said salamu alaykum to king so and so what has that benefit us nothing so why are they sharing his salam you give salam hundreds of times a day no one writes it anywhere why are they not writing it for you why are they writing it for him you said salamu alaykum he says salamu alaykum ah there's a difference because there's a qaida there's a maxim a principle it is al kalimatu qimatuha qimatu qailiha a statement is always placed on the level of the speaker, the one who said it. And that's when it earns currency. So if you've understood this maxim now with these examples that I have provided, what is your opinion then of the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you're going to take the speech of Allah, the Qur'an al kareem that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٌ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ In the Qira'a of Ibn Amr, Abu Amr, وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٌ وَالْبَحْرَ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبَعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ If you were to gather all of the trees on the earth and you were to make the trees on the earth, what does Allah say? What are you going to make the trees on the earth? It's famous, eh? Huh? Ink, right? To write with. والبحر and you were to gather all of the oceans. All of the oceans on earth, is there more land or more water? There's more water. If you were to gather all of the oceans, 
and you were to gather seven oceans like that, and you, you were to use that as paper to write down the Quran, Allah says, Ma nafidat kalimatullah. The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never end. This is in the Quran itself, describing the Quran and how great the Quran al Kareem is. So we began this lecture with this introduction, and we said that the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enough of a virtue for it is that it is a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the month of Ramadan, then this month, it has become distinct. It has become separated. It has become known for the revelation of the Quran within it. Allah Ta'ala, Allah said, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. The month of Ramadan, it is the month that the Quran was revealed. This is a month where milladun, from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu until our time, until the end of times, the Muslims have been seen ala marril usur, leaving all other types of education and study and only reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't do anything else. They don't do anything else. Even the Prophet ﷺ, even the Sahaba, let alone the ulama that came after, they would only be seen reading the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars, they say, this month that we are in now, Shahru Sha'ban, the month before Ramadan, the eighth month of the calendar, it is Shahru Al-Qurra. It is the month of the reciters. And Ramadan, it is Shahru Al-Quran. It is the month of the Quran itself. Because you need to prepare. So you see the Quran, you see the Muslimin preparing in this month, reading the Quran as much as possible. Even the ones that teach fiqh and teach a hadith, they will stop this in the month of Ramadan. And they will all read the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So clearly Ramadan and the Quran, they have a very close relationship. Al-Imam Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that the clever, smart believer is the one that comes with the best of actions and the best of speech. And there's no doubt that the best action and the best of speech, even outside Ramadan, it is the speech of Allah. The scholars, they say, the greatest form of dhikr, the greatest form of remembrance, it is to remember Allah through his speech. Because when you read the Quran, Allah is speaking to you. So you're hearing the messages of Allah. And this is how the scholars of early used to view the Quran. They would say, إِنَّ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ رَأَوُ الْقُرْآنَ رَسَائِلَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ the Sahaba, they used to see the Qur'an, the speech of Allah, as rasail min rabbihim. They used to see the Qur'an as messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your Lord speaking to you directly, advising you, guiding you, reminding you. If you make a mistake, what is for you? If you do the right thing, what is for you? Where are you heading? People have problems, problems in their lives, in their worldly lives, in their religious lives. Problems at home, problems at work, problems financially, problems with their health, problems in their mind. All of this, all of which is discussed in the Qur'an. And that's why Allah described the Qur'an to be a shifa. Shifa, it is a cure. It's not like medicine that you drink. Or you don't mix it with tea. لا. But if you open the Qur'an and you are searching for answers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will speak to you and give you your answer. So the Qur'an in Ramadan, you read it in search for guidance. That's why Allah said, in that ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ أَلَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ It is the Qur'an that Allah revealed in Ramadan. And this Qur'an that Allah revealed in Ramadan, it is a hudan للناس. It is a guidance for the people. So you're going to be reading the Qur'an, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to be reading it before Ramadan and in Ramadan. But in Ramadan specifically, you are in search for guidance. And guidance is found in every ayah in the Qur'an al kareem you need to know how to extract that guidance though. You need to know how to find it. Because sometimes you're reading an ayah, but you don't understand how it may relate to you. And this is what the scholars of Islam from past and present, they know as tadabbur, reflect. Because this ayah has a sabab al-nuzul, it has a reason for revelation. But what is the tanzil? What is the application upon myself? There's nuzul, why it came down. The ayah came down for a reason. It was revealed upon a specific person. An incident happened. طيب, I wasn't present at that time. I didn't exist. I didn't live. I don't know these people. I wasn't there at that time. So do we say the Quran is not relatable to us? Yeah, the Quran is relatable. There is what is known as tanzil. Tanzil is in ulum al-Quran, applying this upon yourself. Is this allowed? Yes, because the Quran, Allah said about it, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدَلًا the speech of your Lord has become complete. 
حالة كونه it is صدقا وعدلا it is truthful and it is fair صدقا في الأخبار وعدلا في الأحكام that's what they say صدقا it is truthful in the أخبار the information it has within it is truthful وعدلا في الأحكام and the rulings that it has within it is also fair so you are going to reflect over what Allah is telling you and you find that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you in the Quran, it is fair and it is truthful. This is the second point. Second point or third point? Second point. The first point was the virtue of the Quran being Allah spoke it and that is sufficient. The second one is introducing Ramadan and the Quran together from that verse and speaking about guidance. The third point, it is you ensure as much as possible in this month, Ramadan, that you are reciting completions of the Quran. <laughs> I don't say completion, I say completions. It is aib, and it is something which is truly embarrassing for a Muslim to not be able to read the book of Allah. You find a grown man, a grown woman, a person who is able to do everything in life except read the Quran. They study, they work, they provide, they invest, they have children, they have a family, they go abroad. They do everything in terms of their dunya. You mention it, but they can't read the Quran al kareem what does it say about your heart and what does it say about your spirituality? What does it say about your religiosity? What does it say about your deen? And what does this say about where you lie and stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because if Allah has opened the Quran for you, He has opened an abundance of khair. And if Allah has closed the Quran and kept you away from it, then Allah has closed an abundance of khair from you. So what are you doing wrong for your Lord to be punishing you like that in this world? وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى If you are free from the Qur'an and the Qur'an is free from you and you have no relationship, you are going to have a difficult, dark and depressed life in this dunya before you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٍ and the one who lives without the remembrance of Ar-Rahman, Nuqayyid, it is Ar-Rahman, it is us, Rabbul Alameen, we appoint lahu for him, shaytanan, a shaytan. We will appoint for you a shaytan, a devil. فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينَ This shaytan is your closest companion. Because if you take the Qur'an as a speech of Allah and you adhere to it, then the Qur'an is your companion, you are close to Allah. But if you leave the Qur'an, if you leave the recitation of the Qur'an, then you are going to have the shaytan as your closest companion. And there is the main shaytan that is trying to misguide everybody. But the shaytan that is being spoken of here is Surah Al-Zukhruf. It is a specific shaytan. نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا أَيْ خَاصًا بِهِ A specific shaytan for you. فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ He is with him all of the time. So either you take the Qur'an as a companion, or the shaytan will take you as a companion. So here when we're saying read a lot of khatamat and completions of the Qur'an, then it is to keep yourself free and safe. You may say that shaitan is locked up in Ramadan. And obviously this, the ulama, they have aqwal regarding that. Some scholars, they say, this is the zahir. This is the apparent. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. So all of the shayateen are locked up. Other scholars, they say no. They say that the big shayateen are locked up, but there are small ones roaming around. Whatever the case, even if we say the second view, which is, there are small ones that are roaming around and the big ones are locked up. The moment Ramadan ends, then the big ones are released again. But if you had a system, a program in your life, your life can't just have a program of wake up, work, go home, sleep. Wake up, weekend, rest, sleep. Play, ha, ba'a, If this is what you're doing and you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this, then on the day of judgment, number one, you have nothing to intercede for you. Nothing, because those actions won't intercede. Your work won't intercede. Your business won't intercede. Your studies won't intercede. Your family won't intercede. Nothing of the world will intercede for you on that day. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Wealth, children, none of them benefit. Allah mentions in the Quran that we made this wealth an adornment for this world. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا we made these things a zina, an adornment for this world to test them and to see which one of them is going to come with the best of actions. Then Allah will destroy it. But if Allah were to remove the wealth from this world 
and Allah were to remove the children from this world, you won't have a mother or a father, you won't have a son or a daughter, you won't have siblings because there's no children. You can't be a child for nobody because there's no children. And you can't have children because there's no children. So there's no children, there's no family, you are lonely. And then you can't have a life because there's no wealth. Then this world will smell to every single believer who is upon it. But there are some people, although there is wealth and although there is children, the world still smells to them. And the only thing that is keeping them sane, it is the Qur'an al-Kareem. Like Allah mentioned in that ayah, I will repeat it again, we'll move on to the next point. If you don't live with this Qur'an, then you are a person who's living that difficult life. Where the entire world, you just want it to end now. So reading the Qur'an a lot will keep you far away from the shaitan, distant from the shaitan, and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next point it is, in the month of Ramadan, the believer has to ensure that he also has a portion of the Qur'an in the night prayer. So everything I was speaking about so far is reading the Qur'an from the Mus'haf or from your heart if Allah has blessed you with the memorization of the Qur'an. But you need to pray with the Qur'an as well. Ramadan is unique for this. Praying with the Qur'an throughout the year is something that is encouraged. But in Ramadan, it is even more encouraged. It's not obligatory even in Ramadan, but it is highly encouraged. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَنْبِهِ The one who stands in the nights of Ramadan seeking reward from Allah with Iman, then this person, all of his sins will be forgiven. You want your sins to be forgiven? Pray before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recite the Qur'an al-Kareem. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in a general hadith that after the obligatory prayers, the greatest sunnah prayer the greatest recommended optional prayer to pray and establish it is Qiyamul Layl. Tayyib, what is the case if this Qiyamul Layl is in Ramadan then? It's even greater. If Allah descends every single night in the last third of it, throughout the year, Allah descends. Hal min ta'ibin, hal min mustaghfirin, hal min sa'il. Who's going to ask? Who's going to seek forgiveness? Who's going to repent? This is throughout the year. Then what about the nights of Ramadan? So the believer has to have a portion of the Qur'an that he reads in the night prayer. And I advise every single person who is listening to me, beginning with myself, to seek, it's going to maybe sound different if I say it in the masjid, but to seek jama'at and congregations of that prayer where the Qur'an is going to be completed. Hopefully it's done here. I'm not saying, <laughs> is it done here normally? Kind of. Pray here if you're local to here, but in general I mean. I don't want to make it seem like uh, I'm speaking about any, any particular masjid. But you seek the masjid that is going to complete the Qur'an. Say for example you're from an area where people don't really complete the Qur'an. Then you go to the masjid that reads the most. You go there. And this mindset, you have to break it. You have to fracture it. You have to squash it. Kill it. Put something in it. Bleach in it. Do whatever you have to do. But this man is saying, I have work in the morning. Ya akhi, it's 30 nights or maybe even 29. And you don't know if you're going to live to see another Ramadan. All of the actions that are done in this month, they are magnified and multiplied in the sight of Allah. So you sacrificing your sleep for a few hours to pray before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only put place barakah in your day. But if you do not do that, then you are going to regret not standing the night before. This happens to everybody. Everybody who makes that wrong decision, at the time of the wrong decision, they don't understand. It's only after. After, the next morning, the next day, the day after, they realize, I made a wrong decision. But you can't change anything now. That's already done. It's in the past. So this is something that we have to all draw our attention to. We ensure that we pray every single night in Ramadan. And if we can, we pray with a masjid or a group, if we can, who are going to be completing the Qur'an. Otherwise, you pray as much as possible. Why do this? Because if you do this, if you do this, you are going to earn honor as a Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that know the honor of the believer lies in qiyamuhu bil-layl, in his standing in the night. The believers, they have honor. The fact that they are believers, they have honor. But this is telling you that the more you stand in the night time, the more you have honor. The less you stand, the less honor that you have. Maybe not with people, but definitely with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has treated the people of the Qur'an differently to all of the other creation. The same way we have preferences. We have preferences. Certain people, we prefer them over others for reasons that we can justify only. And these are reasons that are with Allah as well. The Qur'an was initiated from Allah. It came from Allah. Minhu bada. 
And the scholars of Aqidah, they say, وَإِلَيْهِ يَعُودْ And it will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the greatest Sadaqah Jariya project. There is nothing that will outlive the Qur'an. The Qur'an will even outlive time itself. And when will time end? This is something that no human knows. The most intellectual person, the most researched person, the most knowledgeable person won't be able to tell. Even if they all come together and try to work it out together, they can't tell. When does time itself end? Nobody knows this. But whenever that is, if there is a time, then the Qur'an will even outlive that. The Qur'an is not for dunya, nor is it for barzakh, nor is it for akhirah. It is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? Allah in the hadith has come, He is the first and no one came before. He is the final and nobody shall be after Him. Because the Qur'an is His attribute, because He spoke the Qur'an, the Qur'an is not created, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, then it has the same ruling. The Qur'an was not only revealed, at the time, so the Qur'an was revealed upon the Prophet ﷺ. before that it didn't exist, nobody can claim that. But the Qur'an was revealed to mankind at that time. When the Prophet ﷺ hit the age of 40, the Qur'an came down. As for the Qur'an itself, then all of the Qur'an came down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the lowest heaven. Then from the lowest heaven into the heart of the Prophet ﷺ, it was revealed over his bi'tha. 23 years he was calling people to Allah. So it would come down bit by bit, bit by bit. But before that, it was already revealed. So this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much time do we have left? We're still good, yeah? It's fine. So now we're speaking about the Qur'an and having a routine with it, a program with it. When you read the Qur'an to this level now and you're reading it and you're completing it and you're searching for answers and you're searching for guidance and you're reading it in Qiyamul Layl and you're following all of the advices that have been mentioned here, there's something very important that you have to also come with. And this is tasdiqa. You have to have a heart that is filled with conviction and understanding and iman that Allah spoke the Qur'an. Because only then will it move your heart and impact you. But if you're just reading like any novel, any script, any book, and you're just doing it because you were told to do so, or you're just reading Qiyamul Layl, and you just go up and down, like some do, you break out of this by coming with tasdiq. Tasdiq means you have conviction, and you have iman, and you have yaqeen that Allah spoke the Qur'an. Okay, so we may say, how do I get that itself? You get that by studying the Qur'an. If you study the Qur'an, and what I mean by study is its meanings. If you study its meanings, then the, a person cannot deny the Qur'an. A person can accept the Qur'an, a person can reject the Qur'an, because your free will. A person can reject it. Just like a person can reject prayer. I don't want to pray. A person can reject giving sadaqah. A person can reject zakah. Because you have free will. Allah didn't create you in a way where you do things automatically. Automatically you pray. It doesn't like, it's not like that. So here the same way, I don't have to read Quran. A person can say that. But I'm saying you can't deny it. You can't deny it. And the only one that will deny it is the one who hasn't studied it. Anybody who reads the Quran, how many times have we heard? Even in the Sunnah. But how many times in modern day have we heard a person who has just read the translation of the Quran, they've embraced Islam. And even in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, sometimes the Prophet ﷺ, he would meet the leaders of Quraysh, those who are against Islam, the kuffar of the Quraysh, he would read the Quran upon them. They know Arabic, they don't need tafsir. So they look down and they're listening, listening, listening. The Prophet ﷺ, he finishes reading and then they raise their heads and then they embrace Islam. They say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu annaka rasulullah. We testify that Allah is the only deity worthy of worship and we testify that you are the messenger and slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by listening to the Quran we see these brothers doing things they take the headphones and put reaction videos and put the Quran in people's ears and we, everybody's moved by it they don't even know what it means but the speech of Allah like I said it can't be denied by any human being it can't be rejected though so here tasdiq is very very important because if you have that as a foundation, then your heart is going to be able to receive the Qur'an. If your heart receives the Qur'an, your heart will benefit from the Qur'an. If your heart benefits from the Qur'an, you are a person of Qur'an. How are you a person of Qur'an? By benefiting. Finishing the Qur'an doesn't make you a person of Qur'an necessarily. Because if we say that, then the majority of the ummah are disqualified and discriminated against. The people who memorize the Qur'an, are they the majority or the minority? 
those who memorize the Quran, are they the majority or the minority? They're the minority. The majority of the Muslims haven't memorized. Because in this room, how many people have memorized the Quran? Don't be shy. Just raise your hands. I'm one of them. Alhamdulillah. See, that's it. Throw in five, six more that are shy, that they want to put their hands up. Maximum. And the rest of you, who hasn't memorized the Quran yet? All of it. See? So the majority of the ummah, the majority of just this masjid, haven't memorized the Quran. So if we say to be a person of Quran, you have to memorize it, nearly everybody's out. So we don't say that. And if we say you have to know Tajweed and have a nice voice, then even more than that is out. Even I'm out. <laughs> not everybody has a nice voice. So this is not the criteria. The criteria is if the heart has benefited from the Quran, you are a person of the Quran. Because the Quran, Allah said, it resides in the heart. So has this heart received the Quran? وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَّلَ بِهِ الرُّوحَ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنذِرِينَ this Qur'an was revealed into the heart of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ This Qur'an is distinct verses, clear verses, placed in the heart of those who have been given knowledge. So that's the final part I wanted to give in terms of the reminder I wanted to share today. What was the first thing that I said with regards to the virtue? I gave one benefit for the virtue. Yes. From that Allah spoke. So this is enough of a virtue, I said. And we just restricted it to that. We don't need to mention endless virtues. The fact that your Lord said something and you're saying the same thing. Think about it like that, dear brothers and sisters. Allah said it. It came out of Allah in a way that befits Allah's majesty because Allah is our Lord. He's not like us in any way, shape or form. But it came out of Allah. Allah said it. And now it's coming out of you and you're saying the same thing. This is a great virtue. Who, who, who else has this with any other religion? Or any other false deity or creator? Nobody. Can you say that I say, I read what my creator has read and said? You say, قَالَ اللَّهُ Allah said, and then you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is the first thing that I mentioned. The second thing was, anyone remember? Is it weird again? No. So we mentioned the second thing that Ramadan and the Quran have a very close relationship. The Quran was revealed in Ramadan and then we mentioned that reading the Quran a lot will allow you to receive guidance because the Quran is messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned that this is how the early generations they used to view the Quran. And we mentioned that we are all in need and we are all seeking guidance and we have problems. There is nobody who is problem free. One person in this masjid can, can't say that I have or can say that I am a person with no problems. Everything in my life is as I want it to be. No. Because you are in a world where you are being tested. And a world that you are being tested, there is some problems. Some way, somehow. So the Quran, it gives you this guidance. And it is the best mentor. It is better than your sheikh. It is better than your teacher, your mother, your father, your spouse, your child. It is better than the most senior person, wise person that you have in your community. The Quran, it is Allah giving you tarbiyah directly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you what to do. Allah is telling you what not to do. So this huda lin nas, it is a very beautiful point. And this is why Allah mentioned this as the first point in the Quran itself. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي huda lil مُتَّقِينَ So don't overlook that guidance. Imagine if Allah is guiding you and giving you the tarbiyah and showing you what to do and showing you what not to do. That was the second point that I mentioned. What was the third point? Tasdeeq was right at the end. There was something before tasdeeq. Yeah. Or two, in fact. Completing more than one recitation in the month of Ramadan. And we mentioned this uh, from the angle of the shaitan. And we mentioned this also from the angle of honor. And the hadith of honor in Qiyamul Layl. And that's very important. And I mentioned, try your best to read. Even if you pray, for example, in a masjid where the Quran is not being completed, then I encourage that you go home and you read more. So, for example, in order for you to complete the whole Quran every night in Ramadan, you would have to read how many juz or paras? One. So if you come to the masjid, they only do half, for example. You go home and you add the other half. Even if the time is going to affect your suhoor, let it affect your suhoor. And then have a bigger iftar. Yani it is, it's very manageable. You can work around it. You ensure that you do this, inshallah ta'ala. Even if you're going to stay in the masjid and the jama'ah is finished, you pray over there in the, on the side and read yourself. You don't know the Quran, pick up the mushaf. You're allowed to do all of these things and Allah has made everything easy. 
even in those verses of siyam, of fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says at the end, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَى Allah has made all of this possible for you because He wants ease for you. If you're a woman, you're pregnant, you don't have to fast in Ramadan. If you're breastfeeding, you don't have to fast in Ramadan. If you're sick, you don't have to fast in Ramadan. If you're traveling, you don't have to fast in Ramadan. All of these concessions have been given to make it easy for you. So the fasting is the obligation, but then there are exceptions to that if you cannot fulfill those, that obligation. And then you have the night prayer, Allah didn't make it an obligation. So he made fasting the obligation, and that is flexible if you can meet the criteria. And then he made the night prayer highly recommended, meaning if you leave it, you're not sinful. But if you do it, you are rewarded greatly. So we spoke about that. And then we spoke after that about tasdiq. That was the last one. And tasdiq should have been the first one, but I wanted to end off with that through wisdom. Because tasdiq is the first thing. You normally talk about the heart and the foundation, then you build up on that. But I wanted to end with that so that that can play upon your minds. Because you hear about qiyam layl and reading Quran a lot, but tasdiq is not always spoken about. Even in this religion, for a person to just say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, is not enough for you to be a Muslim. This is the testimony of faith. You do declare it. You have to declare it and you have to believe in it. If a person just says it, then this is not sufficient for them to become a Muslim. You have to believe in what you're saying, right? So you don't believe in it and you say it. Who does this resemble? The hypocrites. They say things they don't believe. So you can't be like that. And the shahadatain or the testimony of faith, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah they have conditions. And our scholars have transmitted these conditions to us. One of them is tasdiq. So tasdiq is really important. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.